Well, good morning and welcome to uh, our morning service. Give you uh, a warm welcome on this last Sunday of uh, May. Today is uh, Trinity Sunday, uh, so we'll be reflecting that uh, in our service. Uh, so I'll give you a warm welcome whether you're watching online or in the building. So we're going to begin, if you respond, with the bits that say all. So all. We say together, we are a chosen people. No accident, no second best, each one essential to your plan. We are a royal priesthood, sons and daughters of the King, heirs and bringers of the Kingdom. You have called us out of darkness into your wonderful light. Help us, Father, to declare your praise. We are a holy nation. Set us apart to live for you, ambassadors among the nations. We are God's special possession. What delight you take in us. Help us to take delight in you. You have called us out of darkness into your wonderful light. Help us, Father, to declare your praises. Amen. Uh, so we begin by singing, uh, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God, uh, Almighty uh, for this Trinity uh, Sunday. Let 
together. So loving God, this time, these moments are precious, set apart from all that we have to do in our lives. This is a place that is safe, where we can seek together the grace you freely give. God the Father, the peace of your Son Jesus, and unity amongst each other to draw us as brothers and sisters in Jesus through the Holy Spirit. God, our Father, as you bring light into darkness and hope to our world, as your Son Jesus brings comfort to those suffering and a full life for all, as the Holy Spirit brings joy to our hearts and everyday miracles of change in our world, we come to worship you and to offer our praise. As we look towards a life where we can live more openly, as restrictions ease from the pandemic, we offer our gratitude for the strength you have given each of us to persevere through all the hardships of this past year. And we praise you for the prospect of new beginnings. We thank you, Lord God, that you have always come to your people in the past for your presence and guidance through centuries of faithful worship and service in this church and in others. You have led generations through the wilderness that life can sometimes be. When they have been lost, you have searched for them. We thank you for your love and commitment for all people. We thank you, God, that you come to us now in our lives as we look ahead once more. So we worship you. We pray that you'd speak to us in our journey through life, that you would go with us when we look for a way that we would see Jesus, your Son, for your love which calls us to follow, we praise you. 
We give you thanks for the times when you've come to us, when our lives are troubled, that you have been there for us. We thank you that your promises remain and will hold us fast. We thank you for your son Jesus who gives us strength, peace and comfort to go on, for your love which holds us forever. But Father, we pray for the times that we have ignored your ways, your path that you've laid for us, when we've rejected your promises of change, when we've neglected your forgiveness and hope, when we have spurned your hospitality, for the times that we've been too busy to do the right thing, for the times when we've made excuses rather than act, we pray that you'd forgive us. So, Father, help us to live every day as a step forward, living our lives always in your light. So we offer you these, our prayers, in the name of Jesus, our Saviour, who lived and died and rose again for us. Amen. Again, give you uh, a welcome, and uh, we're going to do a challenge. So I need a volunteer. Uh, any of the children? Okay, Natasha. Um, okay, any other volunteer? So what we're going to do is uh, describe what you see without using the words. You have to try and guess uh, what the word is or what the object is. Okay, Ty, do you want to come up? Okay, so you're not allowed to look at the screen, Natasha. So, for example, you can look at this one, uh, Natasha. You can look at this one. Uh, so, this is an orange, but I'm not allowed to say the word orange, so I would say it's a fruit, it's uh, round, and then you would have to try and guess what it is by what Ty says. Okay? Right, so you're not allowed to look. Uh, okay, Ty, if you want to come to the front... Okay, so your first word is... Tasha, Tasha, don't look at that, don't, don't look at that. Okay, you're not going to look forward to Tasha. Your first word at Thai is... Uh, so you have to describe okay. this and uh, Natasha try and guess what it is. So... When you're in this, you can see a lot of clouds. And the sky. A what? The sky. Not the sky. <laughs> no. Um, it can go up in the air. A balloon. <laughs> no. Um, people can transport on it. A kite. A what? A kite. A kite. Okay. Um, I don't know. Okay, it has little wheels. At the front of it to stop the plane when it's at its it, uh, it stop. Uh, a plane. A plane. <laughs> you said the word plane. You said the word plane. <laughs> okay. In the real life. Um, okay, next one. Um, okay. That's way too easy if I say that. No. Um, we have this at our house. Um, in the middle of it is round. Is it a ball? A what? A ball? No. A cereal? How could cereal be round? Oh, a plant? No, 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 no. Wait, stop guessing. Stop guessing. You can put powder into it to make it work. Lollies. Remember we have to put the lollies in No, 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 no. no. Uh, oh. Cake? No. no. Um, there's buttons on it that you can use to wash something. <laughs> I gave that too much. Um, washing powder? Not quite. Um, put this in it, though. <laughs> yeah. What do you put washing powder in? Uh, the washing. The washing. Washing, yeah. <laughs> washing. Is it a washing. Okay, 
she don't get it. Okay, washing machine. Okay. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay, do you know I didn't use one of them? Yeah. Okay. Right, next one. Um, wait. Okay, okay, okay. You use this a lot to play different um, games. Oh, I know this. Say it then. Is it a laptop? Oh, come on! Oh, well done. <laughs> okay, right, next. Okay, so I was about to say that I would have gave out way too much. Okay, so your I friend, your friend ne lives next to this place. Um, the church. <laughs> okay, right, hold on. Okay. I feel like she's looking at that. No, I was oh, I never over thought there. That. <laughs> No, I looked, no, I looked there, I looked okay. over there. Okay, well, very honest of you, Natasha, well done. <laughs> I never thought you could look at the pictures on them. Uh, okay, the church, and uh, that's what we're looking at with the, uh, the grown-ups uh, later on. I came across some uh, articles as we look at the church and how we got together and... Uh, Last Sunday we remembered uh, Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit in power on the church's birthday and uh, we're continuing in 1 Thessalonians today. Uh, but some of our history of the church here, uh, I came across, there's lots of books in the office about uh, the history uh, of the church. The Baptist Church, Anson Road, Cricklewood, uh, was formed on Sunday the 14th of September 1908 with a membership of 20 friends being received into fellowship. The various ways that you will be able to serve your church may be found in one of the following. The Sunday School, the Youth Service, the GLB. Anybody know what that, that stands for? GLB. Have a guess. I know what it is. Ty? Nope. The GLB was the Girls' Life Brigade. It was the name before uh, it was changed to uh, Girls' Brigade. The BB, that's more easier. Boys' Brigade. Uh, Life Boys, Choir, Women's Own, uh, Youth Club, uh, Prayer Meeting. And then I came across this. Uh, uh, I'd forgotten that uh, I'm not the only uh, Scottish minister this church has had. Uh, there's a new newspaper article on the uh, retirement of the Reverend William McInnes, uh, pastor of Anson Road Baptist Church. And uh, this article goes on to say that uh, as he took his last service and as the church uh, said goodbye to him, the church paid for a bagpiper to come in and pipe him into uh, the church, which I thought was a quite a nice uh, idea. Uh, and uh, they had a huge uh, celebration. So what is the church? Uh, we often think that the church is uh, a building of uh, bricks and uh, all sorts of different things. But uh, as we've discovered, especially during this last uh, over year, the church is people. Uh, you and I make up uh, the church of Jesus. And uh, each one of us is special uh, and loved uh, by God. And uh, we'll be looking at that theme uh, later on uh, in uh, our service. Great. Well, we're going to have our uh, scripture reading. Uh, so we're looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 and uh, verse 1 to the end. Uh, so Paul, Silas and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labour prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power and with the Holy Spirit in deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. 
And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Acacia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Acacia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they, they, they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who rescues us from the coming wrath. Uh, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. Charles, do you notices or? Okay. Well, again, give you a, a warm welcome uh, to our service. Thank you to those who've sent uh, greetings, uh, Esther and uh, Edward and Beverly and Akin uh, on Facebook. Uh, so good morning. Uh, so just a couple of uh, notices. Don't forget we have a Zoom meeting every Thursday where we uh, pray. So if you want details of that, it's posted on the church WhatsApp group. So uh, if you're not part of that, then uh, the lady to speak to is Claire, who's sitting over there. Uh, so she can add you if you want to be part of the church WhatsApp. So we send videos, we send scripture, uh, prayer requests, uh, and different things that we can pray for one another. Uh, these are details of our services in June. Uh, so next Sunday, the 6th, will be a normal service with groups for young people. Uh, the 13th uh, morning service and the 20th, as we normally do in this church, uh, we make uh, Father's Day and Mothering Sunday uh, our old age service. That will be on the 20th. And then the 27th, uh, we've got down as our uh, AGM and uh, deacons uh, elections so uh, don't forget put that uh, in your uh, diary and uh, as I mentioned that uh, we need to uh, have uh, a deacons election so there is if you're a church member there's uh, nomination forms on the table as you leave uh, so we need uh, nomination so you need to ask the person nominating you need to be a church member and uh, uh, you need the signature and signature of two church members and then if you can hand that back to Chaz or myself uh, before Saturday the 12th of June because uh, our church constitution is quite clear that the names of those nominated have to be read out for two Sundays before uh, the AGM. Uh, don't forget we pray, uh, pray on Sundays at 10.30. Join us. If you want to help us with singing so you're not just listening to my voice, uh, then do come along earlier so we can practice. Uh, we keep a small stock of food if anybody wants to make use of that or if you want to bring food on Sundays then uh, do that as we help uh, a couple of folks in our community. I don't think we've got any birthdays. Uh, next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month so the deacons uh, will be praying at uh, 10.20 if you're a deacon uh, and then Deacon's meeting is down for Wednesday the 16th of June, so if you would like anything uh, discussed then do let us uh, know so we can prepare before the AGM at the end of the month. already mentioned the 21st will be uh, Father's Day, uh, all age service as we give thanks to God for dads, grandparents and uh, father figures in our lives. I uh, mentioned the deacons' nominations and uh, AGM. Uh, so we're now going to take our offering. So during the next hymn, if you want to give to God, then the offering plate uh, come up one at a time, and, and then we'll pray. i uh -huh. 
as we give thanks, as we say these words together. So we say together, help us to give you not only our finances, but all we are, all we have and all we hold. We open our lives to you for the service of your kingdom. Please work through our offering today, our lives this coming week, and lead us to follow you, Christ, in all that we do and say. Amen. Uh, young people are going to leave for your group, so God bless you and those who are teaching you. Please be seated. Okay. Yep, we've uh, new copies of uh, our daily bread, so they're on the table with lots of uh, literature if you want to make use of them. Good. Well, we're looking at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 1. I wonder, how did you become a Christian? Was it something that happened uh, very quickly, or was it over a long period of time? The church is people like you and me, and uh, we looked at that earlier with uh, the children. What is the church? It's people, although buildings are helpful. Uh, they also can be uh, a drain on resources and time. But today is Trinity Sunday, and uh, we celebrate God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Our salvation uh, involved the Trinity and involves the Trinity. Uh, God the Father chose you and I uh, before the foundation of the world, before the world began. God the Son saved us when he died on the cross. And God the Holy Spirit saved us when we were converted, we were filled with the Holy Spirit uh, uh, we were convicted of our sin when we made a decision to follow Jesus. I wonder who is involved or who is still involved in your story of faith. Who do you look for for spiritual uh, counsel? How did God get your attention? Or how does God get your attention? So we're looking at uh, 1 Thessalonians, and who were 
the Thessalonians? Well, it's easy for us to think that they were a city many, many years ago and uh, we've nothing to uh, learn from them. But there's lots that we can learn from them. They were a, a, it was a rich place with good sea and transport links. It had a thriving economy. It had everything going for it that uh, could be afforded. And it was the second largest city after uh, Greece. It was named after Alexander the Great, uh, half-sister. It was a port and it was a strategic uh, place. It had an independent government, though it was overruled by uh, the Roman Empire. And uh, around the city was loads and loads of different uh, temples and uh, altars to lots and lots of different uh, gods. And it's in that context that uh, we have Paul uh, visiting. He was only in the city for a very short time and had to leave very quickly. But he wants them to remember some important uh, things. He wants to help them to remember uh, what God has done for them and uh, what the true gospel is. He has a love for them and uh, a concern. He has a special emphasis on the uh, second coming of Jesus and uh, we get that in both of uh, the letters. The church was going through persecution and there was a huge pressure on the believers of the church to compromise and to uh, be discouraged. There's a true story of uh, the Duke of Wellington. Uh, Cook uh, had enough and he decided to uh, call it a, a day. He was going to quit. And when the Duke of Wellington's Cook was asked, well, why are you quitting? You're in a, a good job. You're serving food for this well-known uh, general. And uh, the wages are quite good compared to a lot of people. And uh, the Cook's response was, well, the Duke never praises me when the food is bad and he never blames me when it's uh, bad. It's just not worth the while. The cook wanted some appreciation and uh, he decided to uh, quit. I'm sure you've heard the statement, if you find the perfect church, don't join it uh, because you'll spoil it because it's made up of people like you and me, sinners saved by God's grace. So Paul often starts his letters with encouragement. He thanks the church for a number of things and then he goes in and he uh, criticises them or tells them off uh, for something. At least three times uh, Paul thanks the church for the way that it responded to his ministry. Always we thank God for you all and always we remember uh, you in our prayers. These verses also help us to remember that uh, Paul wasn't just a one-man band show. Uh, he had people who worked alongside him. He had disagreements with some of them. Uh, here in this passage, we, in verse 1, we see Silas and uh, Timothy mentioned. Silas was a long companion of Paul. He travelled with Paul on a second missionary journey. He was imprisoned and uh, set free. And... Uh, he was a good help to Paul. Timothy uh, was a resident of Lystra and uh, he, had a, he was a son of a, a Greek father and a Jewish mother named Eunice. And uh, from his early age, uh, his grandmother taught him uh, the scriptures and uh, he was very appreciative of that. Timothy was a trusted companion and friend uh, of uh, Paul. What makes a church successful? Well, if we were to ask that question, uh, what would our response be? Would it be the number of people that attend or watch the service online? The amount of money that it has in the bank? The amount of different meetings and ministries that it has? What do people look for in a church when they attend it uh, for the first time? I think I've said to you before that uh, the three things that they look for is uh, a welcome, good coffee, and uh, clean toilets. Obviously, we're not allowed to uh, 
serve refreshments yet, but hopefully next month, if the government don't push back uh, the date in, in June, we hopefully will be all able to sing and uh, have refreshments. Uh, let's hope. What makes a successful church? It may have a beautiful building, it may meet in someone's house. What is really important? Well, Paul writes, and uh, he really sums up with these three words. And this is the first. Paul often talks about faith, love, and hope. These are the things that make uh, a successful church. And these are all grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith, love, and hope. First of all, he says their faith then their love, and then their hope. I wonder who prays for you, or who do you pray for? Uh, I'm sure we've all got people that we pray for on a regular basis, and uh, it's always encouraging when someone comes up to you and say, well, I prayed for you uh, today, or they tell you that uh, they pray for you every day. It's such an encouragement and blessing. Paul thanks the church here for their faith, for their uh, faith, their faith. There was plenty of faith in this city, lots of faith in different idols and uh, different gods. There was little faith in Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, even today people put their faith in all sorts of things. You've put your faith in the chair that you're sitting on, that uh, it's not going to collapse uh, this morning. Faith in science, faith in people, faith in vaccines, but not much faith in uh, Jesus Christ. Their faith at this church was something that Paul commended them for, and it led them to do lots of amazing things. Your faith is not what you recite. Your faith is not... Uh, what you sing about. Your faith is what you depend upon through thick and thin, and then you're able to sing about it. In the north of England, there was a story of uh, a prayer meeting that was called, and uh, it was uh, during a time in this country when there was very little rain, and the farmers thought they'd get together and they would call a prayer meeting in this old barn because the crops needed uh, rain quite badly and they met and they prayed and this little girl walked into the barn as all these farmers were praying and in this little girl's hand was an umbrella even though it hadn't rained for several weeks did those farmers really believe that their prayers would be answered well that girl obviously was expecting rain she was prepared and it did uh, rain. John Stott, uh, in his book on this uh, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, notes that two points stand out. The church which receives the gospel uh, must pass it on, and the church which passes on the gospel must embody it. Faith always leads to works. We want others to come to faith in Jesus. I wonder what you're doing in your life, how you are serving him, who are you telling the good news to, who are you praying for that they would become uh, Christians. Then he goes on and speaks about love. Their faith prompted love uh, for one another, and that was uh, one of the clear signs of the early church. See how these Christians love one another. They devoted themselves uh, to the apostles' teaching and uh, if anybody had any need, they provided for uh, one another. Most of you will know that I'm uh, moderating at uh, Kenza Rise Baptist uh, Tabernacle, not too far from here. And as they again begin the search for a new pastor, they've, uh, I'm helping them with a number of things. But uh, I've really sort of encouraged them to... Uh, think about this and uh, they've taken this on board looking for a new pastor you should be looking for someone who loves God uh, loves God's people and uh, wants that love to be uh, shown to each other in our community whatever we do whether at church home or work 
uh, we are to do it unto the Lord because we love him and we want others to love him as well. Verse 4 says, For we know, brothers and sisters, loved by God. You and I are loved by God. And then it goes on and says that he has chosen you. That he has chosen you. Isn't it amazing to know that we are loved so much by God? That he loved you before uh, you loved him. Difficult to get our heads around. The good news of Jesus Christ can be accepted and responded by anyone. But the Bible is quite clear that God knows, even before the foundation of the world, who was going to accept that good news. We are chosen. Uh, we are chosen. Uh, we have been convicted of our sin by the Holy Spirit. Paul speaks about knowing, he speaks about being loved, he speaks about election, uh, loved by God, chosen by them. Uh, the two go together. When, when we love someone, uh, we naturally choose them. Uh, and that's what God has done uh, for us. God loves us. He has chosen us. The gospel changes people's lives. The gospel isn't just mere words. Paul in this passage says that the gospel is powerful. It transforms people's lives. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Greek. Romans 1 and verse 16. So he speaks about love. People have love for one another and the church there was showing love to one another and to their community. They were reaching out and uh, sharing that love uh, to others. And then he speaks about hope. Lots of people there were following and uh, worshipping false idols and they were no use because they were made of stone, they were made of wood or whatever. Uh, if we're born again, if we're believers in Jesus, then we have a hope, a living hope, that nothing can take away. And that's the good news of uh, the gospel. I was at a, a funeral uh, last Monday uh, uh, for one of the deacons at uh, Claremont Free Church and uh, Tricia had uh, chosen all the hymns uh, for her funeral. I'm not sure if anybody here chosen all their hymns and sorted out their funeral service. Nobody chosen this? No, nope, nobody thought of it. Um, quite a somber thing to do. But uh, Tricia had it all organised and uh, the hymn that, one of the hymns that she chose was one that I haven't sang for uh, many years and it really fit, fitted into what Paul is saying here in 1 Thessalonians. So I'm going to ask Lawrence to uh, play it. I'm not going to sing it. I just want us to uh, read uh, the words. Some of us will know it. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me has been made known, but it really sums up what Paul is uh, telling us here in this passage.
Yeah, thanks, uh, Lawrence. So as we have read those words, it really fits in with 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, how the people were chosen, how their lives were changed, they turned their backs on uh, idols and false gods, how they were converted. And then we see that they received the words. They were grateful for Paul's ministry and the ministry of Silas and uh, Timothy. Uh, they followed their spiritual leaders. They took notice of what the apostles and uh, disciples and the church leaders uh, said to them. They were their spiritual uh, leaders. I wonder if we've got that uh, in our lives, who we go to uh, for uh, advice. They suffered for Jesus. Uh, verse 6 uh, you became imitators of us and of the Lord for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit again we see that the whole Trinity uh, is involved in our salvation and they also encouraged other uh, churches uh, verse 7 uh, you became a model to all the believers so not only were they being blessed by God themselves but they were blessing uh, other churches as well. So Paul is giving thanks uh, to God for them. Uh, out of all the churches mentioned in the New Testament, this is one of the ones that's got a lot of things uh, right. They didn't have everything right because, as I said earlier, uh, no church uh, is, is perfect. Um, and as we think about uh, people's lives being changed, we're going to listen to this testimony of uh, someone's life uh, he was My life before I became a follower of Jesus, it was a period um, in which I was consumed by the love of money. My name is Manoj and this is my story. I was a businessman, uh, a property trader, um, and my whole world revolved around trying to buy as many blocks as I could throughout the UK to essentially make uh, the most amount of money that I could physically make in my lifetime. In terms of my business, 2008 was going to be the big year for us. Uh, but then we all know what happened in 2008. The mortgage market collapsed. For me, the credit crunch was like literally being in an earthquake. Everything just started to crumble overnight. It was during that same time that my son also became ill. He was rushed to hospital um, and he was rushed into resuscitation where essentially he stopped breathing and there were all kinds of complications. But what do you do when you're ushered into the room next door? Um, I turned to God in the hope that he would somehow uh, come and help us. My son was transferred to St. Thomas's uh, in London and then the consultant comes and sees us on the fourth day and says, I'm really sorry, but you know, your son is not going to open his eyes for some time yet. Uh, they were still trying to work out what was going on. And yet what was resonating um, throughout the four days was the fact that this, this American couple that had come over from the States, um, we'd recently befriended them and, uh, and they were praying. It really impacted me because they called us so many times and talked about the church lifting up my son in prayer. And it really gave me a lift. Um, and what really, really impacted me was the fact that um, this lady in particular um, collapsed on the floor and wept for my son. There was something there that I felt that she had that was, uh, that was different. So on that fourth day, the consultant had said to us, your son is not going to open his eyes for some time yet. And as she did the ward round, my son suddenly just bolted, literally just bolted upright in bed. And as you can imagine, there's so much elation and there's so much joy. And I remember turning to my wife and said to her that, you know, when we get out of this hospital, let's just go to that couple's church that prayed for our son. It was a big sort of experience that I had in that church in the sense that I literally walked out uh, a, a different person. My wife really didn't recognize me. My mother thought I'd joined some kind of cult because suddenly I wanted to try and do everything differently, particularly in, in the area of business. Before that, I was very, very arrogant, very ruthless, very money-driven. And for, as someone who had essentially lived such a sinful life, and in the midst of all of that sin, 
there's a God that says, I forgive you and I'm going to wipe the slate clean. Now, how do you get your head around that? Okay, a powerful uh, uh, testimony. Um, how did the gospel come? Well, conversion begins with God, not us. It flows out of his love for each and every one of us. Paul and Silas and Timothy were chosen. They brought the gospel. Uh, they were, the church at uh, Thessalonia was uh, grateful for them. Uh, there was the Holy Spirit. Remember that the gospel is not just words, but it's powerful. It's uh, life-changing. And it changed people's lives. Uh, the passage says that they were imitators of us and of Jesus. Uh, it brought them through thick and thin, even in the face of severe uh, persecution. They were heralds. Not only did they keep this good news to themselves, but they went out and shared the good news of Jesus. What is the good news of Jesus? Well, it's the gospel. G, God, O, offers S, sinful people, P, E, eternal, and then L, life. God offers sinful people eternal life. G-O-S-P-E-L. I was trying to work out, uh, got the spelling right. Um, what reputation do uh, you have as a Christian? Do people see the work of God in your life and my life? What reputation does uh, Cricklewood Baptist Church have? As I read that story earlier about uh, a former minister uh, retiring and uh, how grateful he was for the church's uh, send-off. What examples can you share from your own experience of where you have known faith, love and hope? We have lots to give thanks to God for, for saving us and have been at work uh, in our lives and in the work and life of uh, this church. So we're going to uh, sing, um, I am a new creation, no more in condemnation. Here in the grace of God, I stand. No more in condemnation, here in the grace of God I stand. My heart is overflowing, my love just keeps on growing, here in the grace of God I stand. And I will praise you, Lord, yes, I will. Praise you, Lord, and I will sing of all that you have done. A joy that knows no limit, a likeness in my spirit, here in the grace of God I stand. I wonder if you can sing that from your heart, that you are a new creation, that you've uh, turned to God in faith and repentance of all the wrong things that we think, uh, say and do, that you've trusted in Jesus as your Lord and Saviour. We still live in a day where the gospel can still be responded uh, and accepted uh, by anyone. So we give thanks to God for that. So let's pray together. So Father, we come before your throne of grace praying to you, the Almighty God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. A ransom for our souls has found. Father, we pray for the world created by your love, for its nations and governments. Extend to them your peace, your pardoning love, mercy, and grace. Almighty Son, incarnate world, word, our prophet, priest, redeemer, Lord, we pray for the church created for your glory, 
for its ministry to reflect those works of yours. Extend to us your salvation, growth, mercy, and grace. Eternal Spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death, we pray for our families and for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, for the bereaved, the sick and the dying. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them to your mercy and grace. Father, we pray for our own fellowship. We pray for those who uh, have lots of things going on in their lives, for those who are looking for work, uh, for those who have come through recent uh, hospital operations. Uh, we think particularly of Mrs. Gregory. And we pray, Lord, for those who have got appointments coming up for May and uh, Dolores, that you'd give them the strength that they need. Father, we pray for one another, for those who are gathered here, for those uh, who are at home. You know us better uh, than we know ourselves. And we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love, that you loved us uh, before we loved you. And Father, as we go from this place, help us to uh, share that love with those that we come into contact with. So Father, we thank you that you are a forgiving God. Father, thank you that you are a merciful Father. Father, thank you that you are a loving Father. Father, we pray, Lord, that your spirit would fill us and uh, renew us and help us uh, to be your people in this world. So, Father, we thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's stand uh, as we, uh, you can't sing uh, yet. If you want to sing, you have to come out the front, uh, but uh, you can uh, clap or uh, do whatever you want. So we, uh, this Trinity Sunday, we honour the name of uh, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's Jesus because of his work on the cross and the empty tomb and him ascended and coming again that we have hope that is real and is living.
benediction. As we walk onward with God, three in one, may we be called once more to faith by our rock and redeemer, God the Father. Send again to meet the need of the world through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus the Son, and inspired anew by the gusting winds of our restless provoker, the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among each of us and everyone whom we love, this day and forevermore. Amen. Well, God bless you and uh, keep you and uh, have a great week.